The Harvest Show, where faith makes a world of difference. Today on Harvest, we're going to find out what does the famous rock band U2 have in common with the late C.S. Lewis? Well, author Ken Ott reveals how two opposites helped him discover real joy in the midst of tragedy. And Thanksgiving Day is quickly approaching, but there's no need to worry. Chef Carla Hall shares the secret to stress free cooking on today's show. And Brian Bush is on location in the Holy Land with today's prayer request. If you need prayer, call prayer line during the show at 1-800-365-3732. Don't go anywhere. World News begins right now. It is Wednesday, November 16, 2016, and here's what's happening in your world. Iraqi Special Forces have begun a new push deeper into the northern city of Mosul. They are facing attacks by rockets and suicide bombers from the Islamic State group. Plumes of smoke can be seen rising above the city from the artillery and airstrikes by the U.S.-led coalition, which are supporting the advance. Iraqi troops are converging from several fronts on Mosul. That is the country's second largest city and the last major Islamic State holdout in Iraq. President Obama toured Greece's most famous ancient monument, the Acropolis Citadel. He is due to deliver a speech to the Greek people today as he winds up the first leg of his final foreign tour as president and leaves Greece. Obama, accompanied by a guide from the Greek culture ministry, walked along the Parthenon Temple, which was dedicated to the goddess Athena, who was considered the patron of the city of Athens. After his speech today, Obama leaves Greece and heads to Germany. Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto is trying to reduce nervousness across his country after Donald Trump's U.S. election victory. Nieto says he will work to keep good relations with the U.S. and protect Mexicans living there. Meanwhile, Martha Sanchez, a member of the activist group Mesoamerican Migrant Movement, wonders how Mexico can absorb the millions of deportees Trump is threatening to send back home. Mothers of migrants who went missing on their journey to the U.S. marched in southern Mexico Tuesday, raising awareness about the plight of those crossing through the country. Republicans have renominated Paul Ryan to be House Speaker when next year's GOP-led Congress starts working on Trump's agenda. House Republicans picked the Wisconsin congressman at a closed-door meeting on Tuesday. That was not the video from that meeting, though. That me video came from Kenya, where they are burning illegal weapons, weapons that have been rounded up. Now we're looking at what was going on in Washington yesterday, where Paul Ryan was renominated by the Republicans to be Speaker of the House. This leadership team is unified. This entire House Republican conference is unified. And we are so eager to get to work with our new president-elect to fix America's pressing problems. Uh, maybe he can fix our tape problems, too. Some hard-right GOP lawmakers have said Ryan has not been a sufficiently aggressive champion of conservative causes. And Kenya's deputy president attended the burning of more than 5,000 firearms seized by authorities to discourage circulation of illegal weapons in a country battling extremist violence. Deputy President William Ruto presided over the blaze of rifles and pistols in three stacks about 15 feet high. Ruto said they were recovered in the country over the past nine years. Kenya has very stringent gun laws. Obtaining a license there is difficult, but guns are smuggled through the porous border, especially from Somalia. And authorities estimate a half million guns are illegally held by civilians there. Hey, it's live TV, folks. Things happen. Coming up later, Chef Carla Hall shares the secret to stress-free cooking this Thanksgiving. But up next, author Kevin Ott reveals how two opposites helped him discover real joy. We're right back with more Harvest after this. When Jesus gave his great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, he was not just speaking to his disciples, he was speaking to you and me. Through the outreaches of the Sea Broadcasting's television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, and prayer line, souls come to faith and are saved every day. As a financial partner with the Sea Broadcasting, you too will be investing into the lives of men, women, and children as we proclaim God's word around the world together. LaCie Broadcasting Partners in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries. You can be a partner in faith with us for as little as a monthly gift of $25. 
your gifts help the C Broadcasting bring life, hope, and love into a dark world. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. That's 1-800-365-3732. Be a part of the Great Commission. Kevin Ott was reared in the home of a Bible scholar and a music therapist, which is why he probably loves theology and leading worship, his two passions that helped him discover real joy and healing in the midst of tragic circumstances. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Kevin. Thank you so much, Valerie. Appreciate okay, so that's yeah. cold language for you are a PK, right? That's <laughs> You're right. That pretty much sums kid. it up. Pastor's kid. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> what was that like growing up? With both, you know, your father was your father. It was your father who. Right. He was. Yeah. He was a Bible. He was a professor at one point at Bible college, and then a pastor. Uh, and he was very gentle about it. He didn't really force it. So mm -hmm. it's something I grew to love. Okay. And what about your mom? She's the music therapist. Yeah, just a passionate m music. Well, my late mother was just crazy about music, and she loved helping autistic kids uh, using music to help their. Uh, development and their their healing in different ways. So, okay, yeah. and I'd imagine that brought you healing because you went through a, a tragic situation. Tell us about that and mm -hmm. how it brought you full circle. Yeah, so in, in 2010, just a few days after Christmas, I got the call that no one wants to get. Uh, my dad called, and my dad are close, but we're not phone people per se, so getting a call from him randomly out of the blue was not expected. Mm -hmm. and he got that kind of cold lump in your throat. Mm -hmm. And then I got the news, my mom had passed away in the night. Uh, she, she was just in her early 60s. She had health problems, with, but it was unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, she had some kind of aneurysm in her heart, and it was just instant like wow. that. Wow. And it just you know hit me, just crushed me, hit me like a ton of bricks. And what was interesting was at first, I kind of had a, I guess the high of the Holy Spirit. The Lord came down and gave me the sudden joy to deal with the situation. And at the funeral, I was able to speak hope and, and really have this kind of a positive attitude. But then as I started to settle in, in the months and years that followed, a deep depression came over me, which I did not see coming. I thought, oh, I'm handling this really well. And then suddenly I got hit with depression and, and um, God started to use music and literature in creative ways to help me get, get out of that. Mm. So, the, so the very thing your mother had taught you while you were growing mm -hmm. up was the thing that got you through it. Yeah, and I didn't go out seeking for that. God just brought the music to me in very unexpected ways as well, which I, I kind of talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, you've got quite a, uh, a storied background in music. You've got a degree mm -hmm. in music composition mm -hmm. yourself. Uh, you've you've uh, uh, not just a fan of, of U2, but kind of a, a real student of and, and mm -hmm. uh, a diver into a U2. Uh, how did that begin as a PK? What, what was it about uh, you know, that the band from Northern Ireland, I believe, right. <laughs> uh, kind of dig into your soul? Uh, well, it was around, right around the same time where I really became on fire for Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I went on a mission trip. I really found a passion for the Lord. Then I went through some difficult things with my family. And around that time, U2's album, Octoon Baby, and then Pop kind of hit me. And what I found in them, not so much was the lyrical match, Honestly, I didn't know what a lot what Bonham was talking about in his lyrics, but it was the music. There was this deep longing in the music for something that mm -hmm. provoked my longing for God. It just it intensified, amplified my longing for God. Mm -hmm. so. Now, now, U2 is a famous rock band. Mm -hmm. C.S. Lewis is a classic, an author. <laughs> right. I mean, so many of us have grown in our faith after reading C.S. Lewis. And you mm -hmm. say that the two helped you find joy and healing. How so? Right. Well, on the surface, they're actually both from Ireland. C.S. Okay. Lewis was born in Belfast, Ireland. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the four boys from U2 are, grew up around Dublin. But beyond that, and Bono was also a huge fan of C.S. Lewis. He reads C.S. Lewis. But beyond that, there was something much deeper. And it really starts in C.S. Lewis's very unique concept of joy. He completely redefines joy as not an arrival to utmost happy, happiness, but a sudden, deep, intense stab of longing for something beyond what this world can offer. Mm. It's almost like a homesick for, homesickness for heaven is what it really is, that longing, deep longing. And he brought that idea of joy all throughout his writings. And you too, um, their music really actually amplifies that idea of joy. And I go into in the book that the actual music theory principles that you two uses has some surprising similarities to that idea of joy, of longing, of looking beyond the horizon. And, and to really get there, I also bring the premise that uh, music itself uh, has an element of intelligent design in it, that God has built in, his, his fingerprints are all over music, the way that music structure, physics of sound works. 
And U2 just intuitively uses that mm -hmm. physics of sound to, to express this spiritual longing that C.S. Lewis writes about. So it's a str very unexpected, but the common ground is there. It's powerful. Well, and you go really deep into mm -hmm. it in your uh, project, Shadowlands and Songs of Light. Why that title? Well, it, it's, it begins, that my journey began with shadows and mm -hmm. darkness and it ended with light. And Shadowlands is a term uh, linked to C.S. Lewis. He uses that in his, in his books. Mm -hmm. Even there's a book, uh, I'm sorry, a movie called Shadowlands. And then Songs of Light. I, you know, originally had <laughs> wanted the title Songs of Innocence or Songs of Experience, which is actual names of U2 uh, albums. But we had to kind of change it up for, you know, Copyright legal reasons. reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that got a little complicated. So Songs of Light yeah. made sense. You know? An interesting thing, too, is, uh, you know, as a read through devotional, what you call an epic journey into joy and healing. Mm -hmm. You kind of uh, use some of Lewis's writings, but you also then say, okay, play this song in the background. Uh, from mm -hmm. from you too as you're going through mm -hmm. this. So really kind of bringing the two together. Is this something you did personally and then put it together or is it something that came to you for, for others to do? It, it did start personally. It wasn't exact in the order that you see in the book, mm -hmm. but all the songs that are that are assigned to each, each chapter has its own song assigned to it. And it, it's a curated playlist. So as you go through each chapter, you can go to iTunes or Spotify and build your playlist song by song as you're reading. And then when you finish the book, the songs will remind you of each major point, because each song is tied to a major point in the book. But for me, it was more of a scrambled order of what you see in the book, mm -hmm. um, that God kind of randomly used each song at different times. And then as I was writing the book, he kind of ordered it all for me, put it all together for me. So. What are some of the other themes that you talk about in Shadowlands? Uh, the other themes? Well, um, Besides, music theory is a big part of the book, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and I really explore it in uh, common terms that you, anyone can understand, fun, creative ways to really understand music. So if you're a fan of music in general, you, it's meant also for a music fan, mm -hmm. uh, just a fan of, of how even rock bands like U2, how they come together, what, they're, what life is like in mm -hmm. a band. So music fans in general will also like that aspect yeah. of it. And what is it that you really hope that uh, is the takeaway for people that, that are maybe going through some things mm -hmm. like depression or tragedy in life or sudden changes, uh, what is it that you really hope that they come away with? Yeah, well, C.S. Lewis's definition of joy was a deep longing, and that's really what I want, is that people will come away with inconsolable longing for God mm -hmm. in their life. And really, my secret that I told my publisher is that really, A.W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God is actually my secret kind of playbook for this book. Mm -hmm. That's really what I'm trying to mirror is Tozer and, and really uh, provoking a deep hunger for God as, as they read it. Okay, so how cool is this? I think we have a picture of you with your daughter standing in front of the wardrobe closet right. <laughs> of Lion, oh. Witch, and Wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Look at, now look at that. So give us a story <laughs> about that quickly. <laughs> right, yeah, well, Westmont College actually has the wardrobe that was once owned by C.S. Lewis. Uh -huh. Wow. And if you go through it, the actual Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe description of the wardrobe, it matches perfectly that wardrobe in every way. So that really? is the wardrobe owned by Lewis that he used to inspire the description of the wardrobe in the book. Wow. So. And you know, Kevin, I think it's so interesting and creative the way you have used your story in a book form and your love for music to combine the two to mm -hmm. offer joy and healing to people. Um, you know, Christmas is upon us. The Christmas season will be here before we know it. And there are people who go through depression and they're sad and lonely. Mm. Kind of speak to that person, you know, as you have spoken to your readers. Well, the thing to look for when you're in the smoke of depression is, is a little pinpoint of light that God sends, that a little well of longing that you feel. It could be anything. It could be provoked by a, a music or just a memory or the, the starry night. When you feel that longing, don't just let it come and fade, but actually mm -hmm. let it move you to seek time, with, spend time with God. That's what helped me was, was he used moments that uh, deep experience of longing to spend more time with him. And that's what got me through the depression. And mm -hmm. your um, website is stab, stabsofjoy.com. And you mm -hmm. say that God gave you stabs of joy as well during your time. Right. Um, and it, it became more and more intense as the grief intensified. Mm -hmm. And that's what blew me away. In Christ, our joy and our grief can coexist. In the world, it's almost one or the other, mm -hmm. but in Christ, they can coexist. And in fact, he gives us the ability to grieve deep, more deeply, but also have a deeper joy. And he sends little stabs of joy. He uses all sorts of things, music, literature, 
all sorts of things to do it. So. I love it. To yeah. connect, thank you so much, Kevin. <laughs> to connect with him, go to stabsofjoy.com or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project. It's called Shadowlands and Songs of Light. Coming up later, Chef Carla Hall shares stress-free cooking tips for this Thanksgiving. I'm going to need them. But up next, Brian Bush joins us from the Holy Land with today's prayer request. We'll be right back. The Word of God has the power to transform broken lives, but only if we share it with those who don't know the good news. Each $5 you give between now and December 31st will provide a Bible to one person. A gift of $5 provides one Bible, $25 sends five, and a gift of $180 provides a case of 36 Bibles to those in need. Pray about your gift and then call 1-800-365-3732 to give today. If you want to do more and be more, but your stamina runs out of steam, you need the top-selling Essential Vitamin Mineral Pack by Dr. Rodrigo Rodriguez. The Doctor's Making Healthy Choices Essential Pack costs only $59.95, but the health benefits are priceless. You get Mineral Concentrate, an unsurpassed formula of trace minerals essential to good health. Omega-3 for overall vascular support and healthy brain function. Vita Sprouts, a superior form of multivitamin vitamins and you get Sol you see for a strong immune system that's mineral concentrate omega-3 vita sprouts and Sol you see an incredible value for only $59.95 and if you act now shipping is free call 1-800-965-2345 or go to mhclife.com to get the doctor's essential pack from making healthy choices that's 1-800-965-2345 or mhclife.com Scripture tells us to cast our burdens upon him, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now from here in Jerusalem. We're going to start off with Mike in Canada. I need the Holy Spirit to help me with this eating disorder. Well, let's go to God right now. Dear God, we ask that Mike's situation be remedied. You made food. We need food. And we ask that you would help Mike and control this situation. Next up, we have Victoria out in Hawaii. She's being bullied by her husband, and she is asking us to be in agreement with her that God would deliver him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask that Victoria would feel safe and secure at her home and in her relationship with her husband. Help him to model your patience, mercy, and compassion, and above all, your love. And lastly, we have Jan in Florida. Please join us in prayer as we ask the Lord to help us get our kids back from foster care. Let's pray indeed. Our God, we thank you for Jan, and we ask that the children involved could return to a home filled with peace. Thank you for the care that they have had, but we know, God, that you would prefer them to be with their parents. And we ask now that your will would be done in this situation and in all of the prayers that we have prayed this day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Friends, feel free to contact Prayer Line anytime. Got Facebook? Follow The Harvest Show. Comment and share your opinions on current events. See new after the show guest interviews. Watch my updates and inspiration from Israel exclusively for Facebook. Facebook.com slash The Harvest Show. Like us today. Between shopping for gifts and preparing delicious meals for the family, expenses can add up quickly during the holidays, but there are ways to spend less and reduce stress. Joining me to talk about it is the co-host of ABC's hit show, The True, Chef Carla Hall. Welcome to The Harvest Show, Carla. Thank you, Valerie. I love harvest in your name because oh. it's all, it's tis the season. Yeah, for some great harvesting. Hey, I know most people are wondering how they can entertain and make delicious meals without losing their mind. Any tips for us? 
<laughs> yeah, I do not want anybody to lose their minds, and I, I want people to have it magical and everything, And which is why I partnered with Aldi, because it's all about me sharing, not what I know, but sort of helping people get through this season. But it's, it's challenging, and it's challenging because I think people are like, oh my gosh, I'm going to spend a fortune. And, but you don't have to, and you, and you don't have to sacrifice the quality. The two can go hand in hand. And so the first thing you need to do is to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So have a plan. plan I, I like to plan the menu based on a balance of hot dishes and um, room temperature dishes and cold dishes. So the first thing I do is see what fits on the stovetop. So put your pots here and then see what fits in the oven. And by the way, these um, enamel coated cast iron skillets happen to be at Aldi right now for the holidays. And I, I love these because they go from the stovetop or the oven to the table. You don't have to think about, what am I gonna put in there? So these are gorgeous. So that's the first thing, plan your menu. And then when you go to the store, be flexible. Because I think that a lot of times people are so set with that recipe that if they see something gorgeous and beautiful, they're like, oh man, I would wish I'd put that on my menu, but they didn't and they leave it there. But that's the thing that's gonna make things like beautiful and magical and keeping like even your joy mm -hmm. just to having that little surprise. Okay, so Carla, what are some of your uh, holiday favorites? So for me, it's all about the sides. Okay. You know, I, I love the sides. Yes, the ham, the <laughs> turkey, but I love the sides. So, <coughs> excuse me. So this dish here is a strata, and it uses winter vegetables, but it could be really any vegetable whatsoever. Your staples here are the bread, you have the eggs, and you have the custard, but it can be any bread. I'm talking, it can be uh, stolen, it can be the brioche, it can be croissants, that can be anything, but your vegetables may change. So not only is this dish really good for Thanksgiving dinner, it's also really good for leftovers, because you have to plan for the leftovers too, because mm -hmm. you're, like, you're not gonna be cooking, so this is great for the leftovers. Now, I talked about um, another thing that's great for the leftovers is pot pie. I, I feel, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go on record, I feel that I'm the pot pie queen, okay? Uh -huh. So, but I take the pot pie filling Valerie, and I put it on a waffle. <laughs> and what? We, they have a baby. Uh, seriously, it's a corn <laughs> waffle with little bits of corn. I hear the angels. I hear the angels. <laughs> and so I love this because you can put your turkey in there. You can put your ham in there. You have your chicken. You can make it vegetarian. So it can go either or. It's a great brunch item, a great lunch item. But also it's just sort of utilizing some of the things that you already have for the holidays. Okay, so Carla, before I let you go, I know this may sound a little strange, yes. but the prettier the dish or the meal, the more difficult some people perceive it to be to make. So what's the secret to putting a meal like that together? No, the secret is garnishes. Like this okay. ham is passive cooking. I glaze the ham, I, I put it on a beautiful dish, I put some things around it, sprinkle some parsley, and boom, 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 out the door, showstopper, what? And, and it's passive cooking except for a little, like can you do this? Oh, yeah, you oh, can oh, paint. Oh, oh, yeah. It's so easy. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> no, that's it. But I think the thing is to be flexible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Carla, for joining us here on Harvest. Thank you so much. All the tips and recipes, aldi.us slash holidays. Okay, you heard it from Chef Carla. For more information, go to makeholidayshappen.com or go to harvest-tv.com for more information. Harvest continues right after this. We want to help you live and pray intentionally in 2017 by sending you one of our beautiful and functional LaCie Broadcasting Personal Prayer Diary and Daily Planners. Each week in the diary, there's a selected scripture and a chosen country to aid you in praying while you plan your own daily prayers and activities. To get yours, call 1-800-365-3732 and make a minimum gift of just $19. The demand is high and they'll go quickly. So call today, 1-800-365-3732.
I want to take a moment to mention a special initiative taking place between now and the end of the year through the Sea Broadcasting joint effort with Feed the Hungry, and that's to send 100,000 Bibles to people in need around the world. Uh, we've got over 133,000 kids that are part of Feed the Hungry's Every Child, Every Day program, and wouldn't it be awesome to get a Bible into those kids' hands? We know that the scriptures are a gift that keep on giving because the Word of God lives and abides forever, changes lives, and for just $5, you can send one Bible to someone who's hungry for the Word of God. A gift of $50 sends 10. A case of Bibles is $180. And if we each do our part, Chuck, we're going to make a huge impact. Well, and it's so important what you do with Feed the Hungry to meet their physical needs. But after you leave, and those physical needs may not be met as frequently anymore, mm -hmm. at least we know that by putting a Bible into their hands, the spiritual needs are met. And that's just so important for these people to let them know that there is a hope beyond the world that they're in right now. And that's what the Word of God can do in their hands. And whether that comes in Spanish or English, depending on which country we're sending it to, they have it and they can go back to it time and time again. And Chuck, what better way to spread hope than to send Bibles to these children and to their parents. This is the Christmas season and it is upon us. I mean, wouldn't it be a great opportunity to share the love of Jesus through a Christmas present by sending the Word of God? It starts with you calling that number 1-800-365-3732 and say, yes, I'll give that $5. I'll give that $50 to send Bibles uh, to people who need them. And also remember a case of Bibles, $180. That's my goal to sponsor uh, a box of Bibles. Thank you so much for joining us here on The Harvest Show. We have a lot more coming up tomorrow on Harvest. There's only one place on earth where Jesus walked, where Jesus ministered, only one place where he calmed the sea, and one place where he conquered death. And you can see it for yourself with La Cie Tours. I want to invite you to come and experience the Bible on a life-changing pilgrimage to the Holy Land, February 14th through the 23rd. You know the story. Now witness it for yourself. Call the number on the screen or go online to register for the trip of a lifetime. Hi, this is Stefan Radulich with Feed the Hungry, and I want to encourage you to become a Full Life Monthly Partner today. Why is that so important? Well, because children like these children at the Kiriandongo Refugee Camp come to school every day for a hot meal. For all of these kids, this is the best meal they're going to have. For many of them, it might be the only meal that they have on a given day of any month. Because of your monthly support, we can make a monthly commitment to schools like this. It takes $6 a month to take care of one child, so maybe today you can make that $6 a month commitment, or 12 or 18 or maybe you can make a commitment of $30 or $60. And for doing that, I want to say thank you and God bless you. Please act now. These children need your encouragement. They need to know they are not alone. Please call 1-877-769-9270 or visit feedthehungry.org to help a child know how good a full life feels. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.